Grandma's Summer by Harley Jessup. Slow down, Grandma! The car swung around a curve and Ben saw the ocean for the first time. We're almost there, darling, Grandma said. The car skidded onto the gravel road and at the end of the drive, Ben saw a small wooden house with shutters over all the windows. They bumped to a stop. Ben groaned. Is this where we're going to stay? Yes, darling, please help me get the door open. My name's not Darling. Together, they unhooked the heavy storm door. Grandma turned the key in the rusty lock. The dark house looked spooky to Ben, but Grandma said, Oh, I do love this old place. <sighs> it smells just like summer. Let's open up the rest of these shutters. After the last shutter had been opened, Ben came in and saw his grandmother lighting a fire in the old stove. That's not safe, Grandma, he warned. She laughed. This stove is almost a hundred years old. You have to light a fire inside. You can cook on it and it will heat the whole house. Are you almost a hundred years old, Grandma? No, darling. I mean, Ben. Would you please bring some wood in from the garage? We'll need to keep this fire going. Ben went outside to the garage and pulled the big doors open. It was spiderwebby inside and full of old stuff. Ben forgot about the wood and looked around. On a shelf in the corner, he found a green glass ball. He brought the glass ball back to show Grandma. What's this for? he asked. My stars, where did you find that? Here, I'll show you what it is. Grandma drew these pictures for Ben. It came loose from a fishing net in Japan and floated all the way across the Pacific Ocean to our beach here in Oregon. Then she exclaimed, The beach? We've been here all morning and we haven't been to the beach yet. They carried the picnic basket together and made their way to a huge log half buried in the sand. Grandma said, This will do, and Ben helped her spread out the blanket. The jelly sandwiches tasted good and when they were gone, Grandma said, Let's put our feet in the water. Ben stopped at the edge of the crashing waves. No, I don't want to float across the ocean to Japan. Hang on, Grandma said. Just then a big wave surged forward and swirled around them. It splashed up to Ben's knees and soaked the hem of Grandma's dress. Holding tight to each other, they howled at the feeling of the cold water. This is fun, Ben said. That night, Grandma made spaghetti on the old stove, and after dinner, they played cards by the fire. Do you think Japanese glass floats still wash up on the beach? Ben asked. Yes, but not so many anymore, she said, looking out the window. We'd better bring the porch chairs in. It looks like a storm's coming. Later, as he got ready for bed, Ben could hear the rain tapping on the roof. The house creaked as the wind pushed at its walls. Suddenly, there was a loud boom and a flash of lightning. The electric light went out and Ben was in the dark. Grandma appeared at the door with an oil lamp. Power's out, but we'll be okay. She put the lamp down on the table, and Ben noticed a picture of a little boy holding a green glass fishing float. Who is that boy? Grandma smiled. That's your father when he was your age. Did he find the glass float? Yes, he did, just down at the beach where we were today. Grandma kissed Ben goodnight and tucked him in under the soft quilt. He fell asleep thinking about the glass float that had been blown such a long way across the sea. Wake up, darling! No time to get dressed! We've got to get down to the beach! Grandma shook Ben awake and handed him his boots. Why do we have to get up so early? You'll see! Come on, hurry up! The beach had changed. They looked for the log where they had eaten their picnic, but it had been carried off by the stormy waves in the night. The tide was out, and the sand glistened with shells, seaweed, and driftwood that had washed up in the storm. Pointing to some people far down the beach, Grandma said, Be quick! Those people are looking for the same thing you are. Ben ran as fast as he could, searching every pile of seaweed and driftwood. He found clamshells, sand dollars, and a broken teacup. Under a log, he found a starfish and a little crab. There were shiny stones of every color, worn smooth by the ocean waves.
Ben was about to give up when he saw something sparkle in a pile of driftwood. He bent closer and let out a whoop. I found one, Grandma! I found one! My stars! That's a nice big one! What a lovely green color it is! Floated all here all the way from Japan, right, Grandma? That's right, over 4,000 miles. What a lucky day! Let's have some ice cream to celebrate. But, Grandma, we haven't eaten breakfast yet. They walked back through town with their ice cream cones. People stopped to admire the beautiful glass fishing float, and Ben told the whole story three times. Shall we have our picture taken, Grandma asked. They squeezed onto the stool in the photo booth. Ben held the glass ball up, and the camera took four pictures, one right after another. When the photos were ready, Ben looked at them and laughed. Grandma, I'm still wearing my pajamas. The end.